All right, thank you. Good morning, good afternoon. This is Google Ad Grants and Paid Search by uh, Ron Fusco. So first we're gonna start off with a round of introductions. Um, let me go ahead and introduce myself first. So Ron Fusco, VP of Marketing at Event Groove. I've been doing paid search for, let's say 13 years. Um, been working with Event Groove, used to be ticket printing for most of that time actually, you know, let, let's say about 12. Um, so I bring a, a good amount of experience when we talk through edibles today. And let me do a quick intro of Event Groove. So we are Event Groove. Uh, we offer two, let's say two general, you know, solutions for nonprofits. One is going to be a SaaS solution that would be an integrated, integrated platform for events at fundraising. So thinking if you have events, so you need ticketing, registration, check-in, uh, you wanna collect member data, you have volunteer events and you want people to come, you wanna collect the information and then follow up with them to generate membership. Event Group Events is your platform. Uh, if you do or if you need to do online fundraising, so think sweepstakes, uh, you know, raffles, um, auctions, any of that, uh, event group fundraising can be your solution. And then for event group e-commerce, this is a white label e-commerce storefront where you can sell things such as what we sell here. Um, so this would be products at eventgroup.com, uh, used to be ticketprinting.com, and this is where we sell to, to nonprofits and other types of organizations uh, printed event products. So think event tickets, raffle tickets, wristbands, posters, um, any of the above. Uh, we, you know, we pride ourselves on high quality uh, and great customer support. So if you need support, you know, you give our, give this number a call and we will answer. You know, you will speak to an actual person, which is not common nowadays. Um, and of course, nonprofits all get a 10% discount. So as you're going through your checkout process, you will see on the right a place for you to put your tax ID, your organization tax ID number. You put that in there, your nonprofit will get a 10% discount. No need to sign up. You just put the ID in, you know, and we'll do everything in the back end. All right. Um, enough introductions. Uh, let's go ahead and dive in. So first I want to start off and uh, give, provide a learning objective. So when we go through this webinar, I would like everyone to focus on the conceptual understanding of what we're covering. There's a lot of detail, right? You will receive the slides, you will receive the recording. Um, there are uh, links to other, you know, other assets within the slides. You can reference them, they provide more detail. Um, so as we go through, the conceptual understanding will be the most important thing. Um, so please try to focus on that and then details will come. So the agenda. First, we're going to go through what is paid search. So an overall overview of what this is. Um, I know some people have questions on, you know, what is paid search. You want to cover that. Uh, cover Google Ad Grants. Next, thinking strategically about paid search. I would say this is the most important section. Um, this is not how to necessarily configure a campaign in the tool. This is how do you want to think about it. Um, this will provide the framework when you go to build your first campaign. And then we're going to do building your first campaign. I'll provide a, you know, an overview and, some, and a framework for you to work with, but we're going to go directly into Google AdWords and we're going to build out campaigns live in the tool. Um, if as we're going through you have questions, you know, please, you know, please, uh, please ask them and we'll, uh, and we'll get to them as we can. And then we will leave time for Q&A as well. All right, so what is paid search? So if, if you ever got to you know, Google or Bing and you type something in the search bar or you're, you're on your phone, you open up a browser, you type something in and you see a bunch of results, the results that say sponsored, those, those are paid results. That's paid search. Um, below these sponsored results, and, and, they're, and they're always below, um, sometimes you have to scroll to get to them, would be the organic results. So those results people aren't paying for. But these, these results are paid search. People pay for these results. Um, both Google and Bing make sure paid search is on the top and sometimes the only thing you see. So it's, it's important. 
and it's definitely important if you want to uh, if you want to be there for search results. So how does this work? The the idea of paid search and I might call the theory behind paid search is you want to connect search intent to what you have to offer. So say for example, right here we have beach cleanup Oahu. So I am looking for beach cleanup. My intent right here is to find, you know, uh, organizations that offer beach cleanup. How can I do beach cleanup? And we see that there are sponsored results here, right? And they're doing just what I described, connecting search intent, what my intent is behind what I'm typing into that search, also called a search query, um, to what I as an organization have to offer. This is a, a key concept. And as we build it a campaign, we want to remember this. This is your objective. Connect what people want to what you have. And how do we do this? We do this by targeting specific search queries. So here, each cleanup Oahu is the example with relevant ads. Here we're showing an ad that's explaining what we have to offer and why our organization provides that to the offer. And the offer here is going to be on the website. You know, it can also be a phone call. It can also be a, an app. So 808 cleanups, they actually have an app as well. Um, and so they can also advertise the app and you can click it on a paid search results and you get the app. But the key is how this all works. The idea is the intent is what we have in the search query. And I am connecting to people searching that with my ad and the campaign that's targeting that specific search query. And that ad relates to my offer. That's important. That ad has to relate to what the person searching for and has to relate to my offer. Right? That's what people know to click on it and go to what you have. It seems you know, fairly basic what we're describing here, but it's really important and it's very, very easy to forget this concept. Um, you know, coming from an agency background, I mean, I've, you know, as we train people up on how to, how to do paid search, in the training, this process does get forgotten um, and it shouldn't because this is the core of what you're doing with paid search. All right, a little overview of Google Ad Grants. So Google Ad Grants is a program offered by Google. It's been around for 20 years, you know, since uh, uh, 2003, where they offer eligible organizations, which would be nonprofits, um, up to $10,000 in month per month in in-kind search spend. Um, what's important here, as the program has gone on, there have uh, Google has introduced certain restrictions and requirements, and we'll touch on some of those in a bit. Um, but what's more, you know, it's, it's free, right? Google offers this, you register, you sign up and, and in your account, and it has to be a specific ad grants account that Google will create for you. Um, there's $10,000 per month, give or take, it's really $329 per day. Um, but about $10,000 per month to spend on search ads. And it's only search ads, what we were showing before. It's not display ads or video ads, only for search ads. So how do I sign up? As an organization, how do you sign up? Uh, you go to the link, which is provided down below, uh, Google Ad Grants. And the first thing you need to do is apply for Google Nonprofits. Google Nonprofits is a general program in which Google offers some of its software and tools for free to uh, nonprofit organizations. And so they have, uh, if you're looking for email address, online storage, um, dot, uh, like, uh, like Word, but Google Docs is called, Google Sheets, which is like Excel, they offer this all for free for nonprofits. So if your nonprofit you know, maybe doesn't have email addresses or you may volunteer for a nonprofit and you're using your own personal email address, um, that organization has the ability to get free email addresses specific to their nonprofit, right? You get that and the other tools. So apply for that. Once you're accepted to Google nonprofits, you can apply for Google Ad Grants. Uh, this will be through the UI. You go and you click the button, you apply. There'll be you know, a form you have to submit. Uh, once you apply and Google accepts you into the program, 
it will send the invitation. You must accept the invitation, and in doing so, Google will create your Ed Grants account. You go into the account and you, and you start building. Um, a couple things to note. This process can take some time. Each step can take a number of weeks to for the application process to, to, to be processed. All right, so the application of Google nonprofits, it's processed by a third party. You know, they verify that the organization is a nonprofit, it meets whatever requirements. So, you know, it takes some time and then applying for the ad grads takes some time. So all these steps can take anywhere from a couple of weeks, you know, up to a couple months. It shouldn't take a couple months, but it's possible. So something to keep in mind is timing. Um, but the process itself is fairly straightforward. Google provides instructions, and at the bottom there is a link to, to a, a video lesson, Intro to Nonprofit Google Ads, where Google will walk through each of the steps. Um, it's a really good video. It's a really, really good resource. If you want to do this, I strongly recommend going to that resource and, and following along. There's more detail there than I'm providing here. So el eligibility requirements. There's some things you need to know if you can apply for this. One, you have to be a valid nonprofit. You have to hold that status with the with the government. You must have a valid tax ID that says you are a nonprofit. Um, you cannot be a government entity, hospital, medical group, or school. While those are nonprofits, they are not eligible for this program. Google offers other tools. So for schools, Google has a solution that it sells for schools and similarly for government. And so for nonprofits that don't fall under uh, those types of organizations, you are eligible. You have to be approved, right? And so we touched on that. And you have to offer what Google says is a high quality website. Um, and so this website must have things people can act on. It must be informational. Um, and the sole purpose of the website can't be uh, uh, commerce. So if you sell things as part of your nonprofit, that can't be the only purpose of the website. Um, and if you do sell things, you must indicate on the website how that money is used for your nonprofit. So that's, that's important, that's covered on the high quality website. There's a link here to more details to where that website policy is, and there's a link here for further information on eligibility requirements. Again, if you're gonna do this, I strongly recommend going through the resources here. It, it does provide more information. Um, so as a nonprofit, do you have to use Google Ad Grants versus Google Ads? So there's a difference. Um, conceptually, the, the, the interface you will use is the same, right? It's the same Google tool to log in there. However, Google Ad Grants offers, right, in-kind spend, right? It's up to $10,000 per month. You, are, you have a hard budget cap. You, the account will not spend more than the budget cap. But for Google Ads, you can spend whatever your budget has. You know, as, as you know, what may be a small nonprofit organization, you, know, you may not have budget for marketing. So the benefit of Google Ad Grants is you don't have to spend any money. It's time, um, but it's not money. And so that could, that, that could be a good thing. Who's it for? As you mentioned, Ad Grants for nonprofits. Google Ads for any type of organization, including nonprofits. You will find large national nonprofits spending money on advertising, particularly when they're trying to collect donations. Um, so it's a thing, you know, that you know that they, uh, organizations do spend money on. Um, and the reason why it may be that you have different ad types for Google Ads versus Ad Grants. Ad Grants is only search. Um, if you have video, YouTube video, and you want to build awareness of your nonprofit organization, you can't put that money behind YouTube ads with ad grants, but you can do it on Google ads. Um, another requirement is conversion tracking. We'll get into detail what that is, but basically you must have an action on your site customers can take that is meaningful. And we'll get to what that means. And you have to meet also certain performance requirements. We'll also touch on that a little, little bit later. But for Google Ads, there's, there's no further requirements. They want to take your money. You're free to spend your money how you want, you know, as long as it doesn't violate, you know, certain basic things. Um, 
but Gould doesn't care if your performance is good or bad, just as long as you spend money. Um, so, so it's different between the two. And, and lastly, and this is important, is, is what's called the ad ranking. Um, Google Ad Grants ads will only show on search results where, you know, either there's no paid ads or the paid ads get priority. Um, this may or may not be a challenge depending on, you know, what you're trying to do. But, you know, in practice, if you're very much focused on your mission, um, what's most likely to happen is companies probably can't monetize that mission. And so you're most likely to just to have those search results to yourself. Um, but it's something to consider as well. Um, there's a link below for account management policy that will touch on what's I have here other requirements. So conversion events, performance requirements, there's details there that's important to note. Um, if there's time, we'll touch on them a bit later. Um, but again, the, the, those links are here, um, it's available. And I wanna use this time to say there, there's a lot of content we're covering here. There's a, that's the reason why I provide additional resources inside the slides, which you will receive. Go to the resources if this is something you're going to do. Um, all right, so, so we covered that background. What is paid search? What are ad grants? And so after this, you're ready to start your campaign. You're ready to start you know, building your stuff. Before you do that, it's important to think strategically about paid search. What does that mean? So before you open your Google Ads account, write down your business objectives, right? And, and as a nonprofit, you still have business objectives. You need to do certain things to, you know, to, to, uh, to achieve your mission. So one business objective may be just that, help people with your mission, right? You know, so if you offer, you know, let's say uh, beach cleanup, so, so that, that's a good thing, um, right? So volunteering is achieving the mission. You may offer uh, a, a helpline, right? And you have volunteers uh, working the helpline and you collect donations to support the rest of the organization. But your goal is to help people. You want them to call the helpline um, for whatever it may be. That's helping people with your mission. That's an objective. You can use search for that, right? So you can use search to help people find your organization if they need help. Drive attendance to your events. You know, if you have events, Beach Cleanup is an event, you can do that, raising funds, recruiting volunteers, growing your membership base. These are all business objectives. It's important that you start with that. Search will help you achieve those things. Um, next, you wanna map specific actions on your website to those, um, uh, uh, to those, uh, objectives and I have it the other way around so here think about your objectives and how on your website helps you do that so help people with your mission one example would be call your helpline as I mentioned before drive attendance to your events or registering for the event on your website if for example you want to you have your events but there's no way to register on the website it it makes it tough to use Google Ads to do that you need to have a specific action on your website um, to use Google Ads to drive people to that. So that's important. If you raise funds for your cause, you need a way to donate through your website. Could be a call, right? That's okay. So you can use call, but a way to donate and a way to track them on your website. This is important. These specific actions will become your, your conversion events. Those uh, business objectives will form the basic structure of your campaign. So this right here is core. Think about this first and then get into building, right? What's gonna be your campaign about, your business objectives? What are you gonna track for conversion events? Um, that. So Google has a requirement as part of Google Ads that you track what's gonna be called conversion events. Those are these specific actions. You must track them. Um, that can mean using something called Google Analytics. Um, if you're familiar with this tool and it's installed in your website, great. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it is what's called like website analytics. It tracks data about who and how people engage on your website and it's available in this tool to see and generate reports and hopefully generate insights and 
inform how you update your website. Um, if, if you don't have it on your website right now, don't worry about it. It's not required. You can also use something called Google Ad, Ads Tag. Um, this tag is a piece of code that needs to be deployed to your website to track if they take these specific conversion events. That may mean you need developer help. It may also be if you use a website builder, let's say like Wix um, or other you know, online website builders, they usually have a way to install these ad tags, right? They know it's a thing. They know people need this and they need an easy way to do this. So if you used a UI-based website builder, there's probably a UI-based way to install these ad tags. Something consider. But you have to do this. You have to solve conversion tracking. Um, analytics is a little more flexible in the sense that you can track things like how long someone spends on your website. It's very hard to do with Google ad tags. Um, but if you don't Google analytics, ad tags is the way to go. And there is a link here um, going to more detail about conversion tracking. Um, note this is a requirement. Um, you must install conversion tracking before you set up, um, before you go live with the campaign. Alrighty. So we're getting into the into the weeds a little bit. We will log into the UI shortly. But before we do that, I want to provide some detail about building your first ad campaign. So first, there's two primary campaign campaign types that are available to Google Ad Grants. One is called a smart campaign. This one's fairly easy to set up. Um, most of it is automated by Google. Google will create most of your ads. They will create your keywords. They will optimize towards your conversion goals. Um, Google does the work for you. For most nonprofit organizations where you don't have time, this will probably be the way to go. Um, it is it's pretty hands off. Once you're in there, you set it up, you just let it do its thing. Um, but it's less flexible. Right. So there's because Google's doing automation, you don't have the ability to what's called optimizing the campaign to, to change things to get the performance you want. Google will do what it does, it will work towards your performance goals, but that's kind of it. Or you can build a search campaign. This is a manual campaign solution. It takes time to set up. Um, it requires ongoing monthly management. You gotta log in, you know, at least once a month, check on things. Um, make sure it's meeting those performance requirements. If it's not, you know, there may be changes you have to make to the campaign. Um, we'll, there's resources to tell you how to do that in the next slide. Um, if we have time, we'll touch on those things. Um, you know, um, customer to see fit, you get lots of reporting available. But, it, you know, it takes time and work. You're gonna have to follow along this presentation and also go through additional resources because you know, we're going through a high level conceptual framework here. Um, you probably want to spend more time going through the resources to learn how to do this. Um, so depending on, you know, which makes more sense for you, um, that's how you should approach it. All right, I'm going to touch on account structure and then we'll show it inside the tool. Um, if you're building your campaigns through Smart Campaign, don't worry about this. This account structure doesn't really apply. For the account track for smart campaigns, you have a campaign, and that's kind of all you have. Google does the rest for you. Um, we have campaign and conversions. If you're doing a search campaign, you will have the structure. There is a campaign. A campaign should map to your business objectives, right? So we talked about um, registering for events, volunteering, driving volunteers, driving membership, um, helping with your mission. Those are different business objectives. That'll form one campaign. Within that campaign, you have what's called ad groups. Um, think of ad groups are, I mean, it's just what it says. They are groups of ads. Um, each ad group should tie to a certain message you want to you want you want to communicate. Um, and so if the message is the same, you put them in the same ad group. There'll be keywords that map to that messaging. If you remember before there was Search query, ad, landing page, or you know, website. This ad group is where you put those ads. Those ads map to your keywords, which is how you target those queries, 
right? They go in there and they ask on the ad group and you have conversions across the bottom. We'll go into detail um, within the UI about this. Uh, but keep this in mind, right? The structure is there, you can reference this. And then when you see it in the UI, it'll make a little more sense. Um, all right, let's, let's build a campaign. And so I'm, I'm gonna build a campaign for Event Groove. We're going to drive demo requests for Event Groove events, you know, the, the product we spoke with. Um, the conversion event is going to be a form submission. I'll show you this form. And selling propositions, you wanna think about this, you know, really before you build a campaign, it's going to influence your ads, no hidden fees, you know, flexible scalable ticketing solution, industry leading customer support. There's additional resources here, right? So launching a successful campaign, apply digital skills. This is a short course geared towards ad grants to show you how to launch and build a campaign. That, that will lead into smart campaigns because it's, it's, it's made for nonprofits doing ad grants. The assumption is there may not be a lot of time, may not be someone inside the nonprofit organization with experience in Google Ads, so they focus on smart campaigns. We're gonna start with that as well. Then there's Google Ad Search. Uh, this is also a course down below. It's a Google course. Um, you know, for, for this, it's pretty good. You know, so I, if you're gonna build your campaign, your own campaign, I recommend going through that. Um, the Ad Grants campaign is about an hour and a half to two hours. The, the search training, there's a lot of modules, depending how deep you wanna go. Anywhere from an hour to you can spend, you know, 10 hours on training. So it, it's, it's worth going through that if you have time. All right, let's go ahead and build a campaign. So we're gonna build this for event group events, right? Uh, so we're gonna click in here, um, event group events. This is, this is, this is going to be our, our, our landing page. We wanna take people here. Our conversion event is we want them to request a demo. So what that means is I want to track when someone submits this form. They put in the information, right? You go through here and you submit a form. That's that conversion event. I need a way to track that. Um, again, if you have, if, if you're using uh, a website builder, they may have this. Uh, if you're using a CRM, so if you, if you collect membership data, a CRM may have a way to track this as well because the form is probably built for your CRM. Um, when in doubt, work with your developer to do this. But this is the conversion. This is what I want to track. So this is a Google UI. When you go ahead and you open up your, um, your account that Google creates for you, this is what it's going to look like. There's not a lot here yet because I haven't built anything. Um, this is the, you know, the basic view. Um, this is for all smart campaigns, which is assuming I want to build. So I'm going to build a new smart campaign. So I go ahead and click on new campaign and it'll start here. First, it has basic information. What's my business name? We enter it. Event group. Oh, that's interesting. That's unexpected. Um, let's try that again. I'm going to pull this over to the side and just get myself started again. I don't know why that's happening. Just give me a moment here. All right, we are live. This, 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 is, this is the fun of doing things live. Sometimes, you know, you get hiccups and things go a little slower, but please bear with us as this opens up. All right, so we are in this account. Um, the UI looks a little different right now because it's not starting off with these smart campaigns. It's starting off with a, with, with a view. When you open up your your AdGrants account, it's going to look a little different. It's going to be what's called a simplified view, and that's the view we had before. Um, you will have less reporting, less options, less stuff up here. Um, it's made to be simplified. 
right? And so you can, it's made to build smart campaigns with less reporting, less options. Um, if you're gonna stick with smart campaigns, I, you can stick with that UI. If you wanna change it and you wanna build out a fully, you know, your own manual search campaign, you will, there'll be an option up here under tools and settings. You click on this, it'll look different and it'll say, you know, stick with this or go to, uh, get exactly what it says, but basically, you know, more complex or something. It won't say complex, it'll say something different. This will open up this full UI. Um, in either case, when you go to build a campaign, so we're gonna start with a new campaign, we're gonna build a smart campaign. Um, within this UI, all right, let's start here. Um, Google provides a way to identify your objectives. Um, these all won't be relevant to A grants campaigns, um, because they really don't want you to build brand awareness and reach. They want you to drive conversion events. Um, so not all this is gonna be relevant. What's easy to do is just create a campaign without a goals guidance. Um, so we're gonna do this. Um, whoever you most likely wanna drive leads or sales, um, but this makes it easy to align with the presentation. Create a campaign without a goals guidance. There's options here that are not going to be available for ad grants. Most of these will not be available. The only two options available for Google Ad Grants are Search or Smart, which is a smart campaign. You don't have Performance Max, Display, Shopping. You won't have these as part of Ad Grants. So we can ignore them. We're going to smart, start with a smart campaign. So we click on Smart and go to Continue. It's going to go back and ask me for my business name. Uh, event group. All right, we enter event group, click on next. Website. So this is going to be the website. Um, I'm just gonna copy and paste the website here to make it easy. Um, copy and paste, um, and we go next. This, this is the website. It's not necessarily the landing page. We'll touch on that in a bit. This is the, you know, the home page, the, the, the primary domain, event group back. And what it's doing, it's it's scanning the website, it's crawling the website, it's picking up a bunch of information, um, it's showing what the website looks like. So this is the website, um, it gives you a desktop view or a mobile view, I know this. So it's just confirming, it's gonna confirm, this is what you put in. All right, it's gonna ask for your objectives. Here, I want to get more sales or leads, if you remember, I talk about the objective is to submit this form. It's a demo request. These are called leads, right? Um, so I'm going to click on that. It's a lead. Um, I click on next. And it's 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 configuring things in the back end. Um, so what it'll come to here is as it configure things in the back end, it wants to think about conversion tracking. Um, because smart campaigns are designed against your conversion events. It will optimize, make changes to the campaign to achieve that conversion event. It's gonna target different keywords, different times of the day. Um, it'll look at audience data. So who this person is, what they have engaged with outside of your, you know, your organization. Um, look at these things to optimize towards your conversion event. It starts with Google Analytics. Um, if you have Google Analytics installed, it'll find it, use it. If it doesn't have it installed, um, you won't see this. So I'm gonna skip this for now under the assumption that you know, most organizations won't have Google Analytics installed. Um, I'm going to skip this because we're skipping the head. All right, now it's time to write the ad. Um, so it's starting here, thinking about it's going to the general website. Um, as we mentioned, we want to do this for, for, for events. Um, and events, we're gonna focus on event ticketing. So let's think here, let's go event ticketing. Something very, very simple. Um, you know, we can be more, more specific here, right? We can say event ticketing platform, right? So that works here. Um, what else makes sense for the headline? So for the headline, you wanna have things that relate to what you wanna target. So when people type in something, they see that thing they typed in reflected in their headline. 
we're mostly going to target ticketing or registration. Um, so I'm going to put uh, registration free. Let's do let's do free registration uh, software. Okay, and so that's part of what we offer. So Event Groove, where if your tickets are free, the platform's free. There's no cost. Um, and so this is true, right? If you're just doing registrations and they're not selling tickets, it's free. Um, so, and free is good. Everyone likes free. So I want to put that in there and it is what we offer. So that's important. Um, what else you want to do? Uh, you can also sell your tickets. So we'll do sell your tickets online. All right. If you notice, I'm capitalizing every word here. That's the best practice for headlines. Um, you know, you can try both. Um, not a smart campaign, but in practice, what you find is capitalization of headlines drives a higher click-through rate. Um, for a description, it really depends if it's going to drive a higher click-through rate or not. Um, you can't capitalize every word or not. Uh, but we see here Google's pulling us some descriptions. Um, they're the same. They're not necessarily what I want to do. Uh, let's kind of add some things here. Add some descriptions pre-written to save time. Let's add a description here. Um, right, so I just have some descriptions. I'm just going to add them in. We're not going to go too much detail. Uh, what's important is the the description has a CTA. It was called a call to action. You want people to take an action, right? They come to your click on your ad, come to your website, take an action. You want to tell them what that action is, right? So over here, you know, it's sign up for a free platform or or whatnot. Um, depending on what you are, you know, advertising, you want to use that for your, you know, um, using information inside your description. Tell them what they're going to get. Um, make it appealing. Um, in these examples, I have, you know, all capitalized words. Um, again, it's been tested. Sometimes it's higher click through, sometimes not. Depends upon your audience. Um, you know, Google, Google, Google may test this for you. Um, if you have a phone number in which they can call to speak to somebody, you can put that here. Okay, put your phone number here if they, they can call you. That'll count as a conversion event. I'm not going to put a phone number here. Um, that's okay. Um, if you have one and they can call, you want them to call, put the number there um, and it'll be on the ad. And if they're doing a mobile search and, you know, most searches are going to be mobile, a call works well. All right. So we're going to go through next. It's going to, it's going to, based on the website, create what's called keyword themes. Um, I'm looking at these keyword themes, wedding services, clearly not relevant, uh, kids event services, not relevant, event decorating services, not relevant, birthday party planner, not relevant, corporate event services, uh, kind of, it's way too broad. Um, I don't want something too broad, I want it to be relevant. I'm gonna close it, event planner. Uh, I don't know where Google's gonna go with this. Um, let, let, let me close that out for a bit. Um, so, some things to think about for your keyword themes. You want them to be relevant. Um, you want them to be relevant to what you're offering. Um, you also want to give Google some space to be creative. Um, so what I mean by that is you want to be relevant, but you also want to be comprehensive and let Google try different keywords based on your keyword themes. So I got, I got a couple here. So we'll do uh, let's see, let's see, nonprofit event management, right? And so it's really nonprofit event management software, but this is relevant enough for Google to try some things. Um, event ticketing, again, it's a it's event ticketing software, event ticketing platform. Event ticketing platform has a little higher volume, but we want to be a little more general in that. We want to give Google some opportunity to experiment. So we're going to do event ticketing. Let's add event registration as well. Again, registration and ticketing are similar. Um, that's not what I typed. There you go. 
All right, we're not ticketing. That's not what I typed either. I want to be more, I want to be specific. I mean, I want to be general. Let Google find things. If it's too specific, you know, you may handcuff them a little bit. So I have a few keyword themes. Um, yeah, so I have a few keyword themes. We're going to, we're going to go with these keyword themes. Um, let me go through next. What's important for Google Ad Grants is that if your organization is location specific, right? So if you do, uh, if you're not a national nonprofit and you're targeting nationally, if you're doing, if your mission is, is focused on a certain geolocation, you need to put that in. Um, we are based in Montana, so I'm going to put in Montana here. Um, depending on organization, you want to be even, you may even want to be more specific, right? You can put in a zip code. Um, and then within the zip code, you can extend your, your reach. Um, but go ahead and it's important that you're specific. Google expects you to be specific with the location as part of a grants. It is an account policy requirement. So be specific with your location. Otherwise, Google will pause your account. We click on next. Um, it's going to ask you about budget. So for a budget for your campaign, Every campaign should have a budget of $329. Why is that? Because this is the maximum that you're allowed to spend for your ad grants account in general. If you're going to only do one campaign, you want your one campaign to spend that. Uh, if you're doing more than one campaign, you want to try to spend it across all campaigns, and then you can optimize along the way. Um, you know, figure out which ones which campaigns are driving the better better actions at a better cost and focus on those. Um, let's go to next. And then there you go. Um, what I notice here is for your website, I put event group, not the event group events landing page. So I'm going to change that. Um, you want your website here to be your landing page. This is where people are going to go. Um, because I'm focusing this campaign on events. I want people to go to events. So it looks like I can't change, I would have to go back. So that's something I see here. Um, and that's why this is available to review a campaign. If there's more time, I'll go back and change it. I'm not gonna change it now. Um, but review this, make sure it aligns with what we talked about before, with business objectives, to conversion event, um, add, and landing page. So here the landing page is not specific enough. I want to do something more specific. I click on next. Um, and we see here it's a thousand, ten thousand or two dollars um, for certain months. That's okay. Google may spend a little more. The budget's really $329 uh, daily average, but it doesn't sound as good as ten thousand dollars per month. So that's what Google says. That's it. Um, oh, here, measure what people do on your website to clicking ads. This is for conversion tracking. Um, it's going back to an analytics. We're not going to do that. Um, so we'll leave that for now. Um, and the campaign set up. I mean, that's that that's it here. We still have to set up conversion events. Um, I'm not going to go into that now, but there is there's a tool here where you set up conversion events. This is where you do it. I'll leave that alone. Um, this must track towards that conversion. You need to have a conversion. Um, so this is a smart campaign. All right. Um, after the smart campaign, what I want to do is now create a regular campaign. And so I'm going back in the UI, and I'm going to create a new campaign. It's going to be the same campaign. I'm going to use the same information, but through a standard search. All right. So these are conversion goals that are, it, it's available because we have an account. Um, we have account-wide conversion goals. Um, this is what uh, we want to use one of these. But so for now, I'm going to click on continue. Let's assume we already have the conversion events set up that we want, right? So we set up specific conversion events. They show up here. We click continue. Um, what results we want from the campaign? Um, we want people, people to visit the website and take a specific action. 
So let's go ahead and copy and paste here. Right. Uh, this here, if I click that com. Uh, campaign name. You want your campaign to be specific, so I'm going to use this for event group. That's what we're advertising. That's what I'll put for the campaign name. Um, let's let's start new. All right. What do you want to focus on? Conversions. So as an ad grant campaign, you have to focus on conversions or conversion value. You cannot optimize the clicks from impression share. It's not allowed under ad grants. So conversions are, if someone signed up, that's my conversion, they request a demo. Um, if you have a value, if you are selling products, selling something that has a dollar value, you can use that free conversion value. It'll optimize to try to generate the most value. If you have different conversion events, if you have you know, member registration and volunteer registration, right? They're different. Um, you may give more value to your membership registration. You may give a value of, let's just say, $100, and volunteer is $50. It, if you do conversion value, it's going to optimize to try to drive the most conversions that drive the highest value. So it's going to try to drive the most membership. Um, here we're just going to do conversions. Um, set a target cost per action. I would not do this for your campaigns. Um, here, I would let Google spend all the budget available to maximize conversions. Um, because this is not coming out of any, not counting out of your budget, I wouldn't be as worried about the uh, cost per action or CPA. Um, you just want as most of them as you can get within your given budget. You're right. This ignore only bid for new customers um, for now. If you're looking to drive membership, you probably want to, you want to do this, right? So Google will look at your data. If there's someone converted as a member, it won't target them again. Um, if you don't do this, and and it may target those members again. But for now, I'm not going to do it. Um, we can only do search network, can't do Google Display Network, and we can't do search partners. Um, so it's only search network, not into search partners. Even if you click search partners for a grants account, it won't do that. So we can ignore it. Um, I'm not going to detail what search partners are. Just know that Google search is google.com, um, and that's where you need to be. Locations. We need to do a location. Um, so we're going to enter a specific location. Here, let's do Montana again. Uh, we'll click on this. Language is English already. We leave that alone. Broad match keywords. Um, so we're going to use broad match keywords inside the campaign. This is a setting that changes the way your entire account is structured. It it will affect all your campaigns. Don't do this. Just do this for now. You can use broad match keywords in here, and we're going to use them. Um, there's other settings. The settings that come out of the box are good. Leave the settings as is for now. Um, you want to optimize for best ads. It'll do that already. Um, start end dates, we have that. I don't have any brand restrictions. So we just click on next. Here there's audience segments. It's new. Um, we can go ahead and ignore audience segments for now. Google's going to figure out audience segments when it starts doing bidding. I would let Google figure it out. We don't need to add stuff. It'll, it may restrict the campaign. So we leave, leave that as is. Next, um, we put in the landing page. So we're going to go event group events. Uh, I'm going to try to go somewhat quickly here. Uh, event group events. Uh, we will. So if you do add products or settings here, so we do event ticketing platform. It's going to give keyword suggestions. Um, yes, replace because we want to replace the keyword suggestions there. What's down below is not relevant. So we click on replace. It should find some pretty good keywords. Awesome. These are good. Um, let's see. Event ticketing platform, online ticket sales platform. Yeah, that's relevant. Ticketing platform for events. Best ticket sales platform, ticket selling platform, cheapest ticket. Yeah, these are all 
These are good. These are relevant. Cool. Perfect. I like those keywords. Um, so right now we're building what's called an ad group. Um, if you remember before, I had keyword themes. It was here. Let me actually pull it up. Let's give an example. So if I put this in here as well, nonprofit event management and event ticketing platform. If I do this right now, it's going to find keywords that map to both these things. It's going to put them in the same ad group. We don't want to do that. The reason why these are different things. They have different intent. Nonprofit event management is specific to nonprofits, right? So some nonprofit organizations may search for this. Um, we want to show ads that are specific to what they're searching for. We want to show ads specific to nonprofit event management. That would be a different ad group than event ticketing platform, right? The, the, the queries are different. The intent is different. They're both going to the same offer we have, but people are searching for different things. Um, therefore, we want to show ads that relate to their intent, what they're searching for, and then map that back to our offer, right? Event group events. So this is going to be a different, um, uh, different ad group. I'm going to call this event ticket. Cool. Um, we can put event registration in the same A group if you want. It's close enough. Um, it depends how granular I want to get with my ad copy. If I want to focus on registration for ad copy, I would make these different ad groups. Focus on ticketing, I would make it, you know, um, different angles. If you want to cover them the same, we can do that as well. The ad copy is going to be pretty similar. There's some differences, right? Ticketing, um, ticketing generally relates to ticket sales. So, you know, you may want, may want to focus on that. And then registration may relate to, you know, free, free registration. Not always the case, but generally when I think of registration and not ticket sales, I think free. And so we can use our free offer here, right? So, I can make them different ad groups, or I can make them the same. Uh, up to you, it's something you would play with and try to experiment with. For now, I'm gonna make them distinct. So we have this here, all right. Now it's asking for ads. Um, this is similar to what we saw with smart campaigns where Google's gonna come up with some ads and may or may not make sense. So we can add different ad copy private label, yeah, I don't love that. So I have ads here that I can add. Um, the type of ads you're gonna use uh, are called uh, uh, responsive search ads. What this means is Google will optimize and try different combinations of your headlines and your descriptions. You can put in at most 15 headlines and four descriptions. Google will show up to three headlines and two descriptions at a time. It will try all the different uh, permutations. It, actually combinations. It'll try all the different combinations. Um, it'll go through them and find the ones that work best. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna, you wanna fill this out. As much as possible, you wanna put 15 headlines and uh, four descriptions, okay? Um, you don't have to, there's a minimum requirement to have them filled out, but you want to put as much as possible. Um, business name and logos. If you have a logo, add it here because it'll show that as part of the, as part of the ad. Um, I have a logo. We're not going to add it. You know, running out of time. Site links. Um, site links are, site links are things that show as part of the ad. So this right here, get involved, our team, donate online. These are called site links. They are links that show below your headline up here and description, and they link to different pages on your website. As an ad grants advertiser, you are required to have two site links. You must have them. Um, and so you must go through site links. You, you have to build them out. Um, and so it pick things, testimonials. That's a good one. Uh, services, I like that. Our clients, great. These are good. Um, about us is good. And you can add more. Let me see, you add a site link. You add the text. That's what it's going to look like. This is the text. Get involved. Um, 
You can add a description to the site link. They don't have descriptions here. You know, they built it up fairly quickly, but you can add a description. You should if possible. And then the URL for the site link, where is it going to? And then you can add more. You have to have at least two. Um, Google does a pretty good job of finding some. I'm gonna stick with what they recommended. Cool. Um, call outs are similar to site links, but they don't link, it just says stuff. Um, so it'll be like something below. I don't see any examples here, but it'll be like this, except you know, it won't link anywhere. Not required. I would focus on site links before anything else. Um, and we are done here. Go to next budget, the number $29. That should always be your budget for ad grants. Um, it's ready to publish. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to publish this. And then it's, yeah, I can go into more detail, keep going through stuff, or we take questions. Um, we're late. So let's go ahead and take questions. Um, okay, let's get, honestly, I have like so many questions just personally that I would love to know because I don't know what I'm doing in Google Ads. I'm going to try a smart campaign that looks so much easier than what I'm trying to do, which is clearly not the right thing to do. Um, quick question. In the smart campaigns, this is for me personally, is it just as easy to create a conversion in smart campaigns as it is to create the ad? Uh, so the, 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 no, the conversion tracking is, let's actually go through it. So you go to conversion tracking, go to conversions here. Um, what you do is you create the name of your conversion, um, create new conversion action, um, create the name, but then there's going to be what's code. This code needs to be deployed either on your website um, or through something called Google, Google Tag Manager, which deploys it on your website. Someone has to deploy the code. You have to do that no matter what, in the smart campaign or search campaign, that is a separate thing. Um, your right. smart campaign will use conversions that you create. It has to use conversions that you create. Um, you create them separately outside of the smart campaign. Okay, thank you. So you cannot track a conversion by just putting in a link to the thank you page after somebody fills out a form. Uh, no, you, you, okay. you, you, you have to put, you, you gotta put code. I on. wish, but okay. So here we go, tons of questions. Um, okay, first of all, Becca had asked about, so we're in there and Google's pulling in all the keywords. Um, do you recommend another way to find new keywords? And should you add those keywords, let's say you use through a third party keyword generator? Um, do you think yeah. the ones that Google suggests are too competitive and you, we should try to find more someplace else? And if so, where? They're generally gonna overlap. Um, what you find somewhere else what Google recommends are gonna overlap. Google has a tool called Keyword Planner that does mm -hmm. just that. It will help you find new keywords. Um, this will be very similar to third-party tools. Google created this after third-party tools existed. Um, if, you, if you're paying for a third-party tool because they cost money, use it. There's no reason not to. Um, I, I would try them. Um, but they're generally pretty similar. Google's pretty good at showing the keywords. Um, the, yeah, Google's, Google, Google okay. wants to open as many keywords to you as possible. Um, so okay. don't worry about being too competitive. They'll, they'll be there. All right, so one person had mentioned something, Carol, about a 5% requirement of a click-through rate. Is that still in effect? That's still in effect. Not If, if you're only using smart campaigns, it's, it's not in effect. If you're using one or more search campaigns, you must achieve a 5% click-through rate. Um, okay. That is touched on inside the slides under account management policy. Um, Google also provides a, here, that's here, this is the account management policy. Um, it also gives you a guide on how to adjust things if you are not reaching your 5% click-through rate. Um, some recommendations are pause keywords where the click-through rate is very low in the keywords. If you do a lot of broad match, pause the keywords. Um, okay. You can go searching in your, you know, a query report looking for search terms, excluding search terms that have lots of impressions, low click through rate. Um, also, mind your ad copy, but it gives you recommendations here on what to do. But yes, it's so it takes 10 years to learn this stuff, right? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. um, so, if a nonprofit's really strapped on time, would you just recommend smart, cam smart campaigns? Yes. 
Okay, because it seems like trying to create your own campaigns is pretty difficult. Can you take a campaign that you already have and like with one or two clicks convert it into a smart campaign or do you have to start over? Somebody else had asked that one. Um, I think you go the other way around fairly easily. Um, okay. I think you can convert it into a regular campaign. Um, mm -hmm. I'll be honest, I I am not quite sure. It is in okay. the slide. There's a link to smart campaigns. I believe it answers that question on, on converting. There is a way to Thank convert. You. I don't know the details of it. I, I, I generally don't use smart campaigns. So I'm okay. not as familiar with that. Because you're an expert. You got <laughs> the experience, right. Yeah. Um, so kind of two questions came in about video and do you have to create two separate campaigns where one's just a click through to a website, one is to watch a video. Is it one campaign or two separate campaigns? um you could do one campaign right um so you could do one campaign it, it really depends on what you're trying to achieve that campaign should be based around budget and business objectives um mm -hmm. since the budget's the same ignore budget business objective if watching right. a video is the same objective as the other thing they tie together yeah you, you, you can do one campaign okay so to communicate the value of the google ad grants um what is the average like cost per conversion to have somebody fill out that form for a demo? Uh, so for, I mean, it, it's, it's gonna depend on the auctions, it really does. So it depends mm -hmm. on who, who else is in the auctions how, and how good your landing page is, how good your offer is. It will vary dramatically. Um, for ad grants, I would not worry about how much it costs to convert. I would worry about getting as much as possible. Um, okay. Google's re requirement is you have at least one conversion per month. So if you spend okay. all ten thousand dollars, you have one conversion. Google's happy. If you're driving traffic to your website, that's a good start. Um, I, obviously, you want to get more conversions. So in essence, you're going to be lowering that number, right? If you get two, it goes five thousand. You know, ten it ten, it drops to a thousand. Hundred, it's a it's a yeah. hundred dollars per conversion. Don't worry yeah. about how much it costs. Just you want more of them. Worry about more. And the reason okay. why I say how much it costs because it's not your money. It's Google's money. So right. Yeah. If it was your money, okay. different. And someone, Cheryl Ashby, I think she just got to the nonprofit or the Google Ad campaign was activated before she was hired. Um, is that campaign or is that Google account now defunct and she needs to start over? What do you think? Uh, that I mean, it should still be there. Um, okay. If it's uh, if it's a Google Ads grant account and it hasn't been used, Google will pause the account. You have to request a form to activate it, so you can uh -huh. go ahead and reactivate that. Um, okay, great. Right. Faster than creating a new one. Okay. So someone's asking, okay, they currently have, this is Patty, they currently have a firm managing their Google ad grant. Awesome. And they, they, well, let me finish. They would like to save the money and do it on their own. So should they go back and just change everything to smart campaigns or should we stick with what they currently have? Hard to say, um, right? Because you don't know the ads. It's tough to say don't on the ads. I will say if they already configured it, that's the hard part. Next, you got to figure out how to optimize it. Um, yeah. There's training. If you don't have any experience, um, it's yeah, it's going to be hard to do that. Um, yeah. If you want to take the time to learn how to optimize it, the hard part setting it up. So once mm -hmm. it's done, you know, optimize. So does a good tailored campaign that's yeah. performing now is it going to outperform a smart campaign generally? uh probably not wow that's so fascinating uh, why am i even wasting my time with trying to figure it out i'm just gonna do smart campaigns geez um i heard you say let's see google search partners no and i see this on linkedin as well would you like to have your ad posted on linkedin partners those are just kind of spammy sites where your ad, pop, ad pops up right so you want to just kind of have it, keep it on google.com and keep it on linkedin.com is probably the instinct. Would you say so? Uh, so for ad grants, you don't have a choice. It's only google.com. Oh. Um, okay. Some search partners are good. Most are not. So yeah, yeah. they're pretty spammy. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. 
So let's see, how many campaigns maximum can you run at once? Uh, I mean, as many as you want, but general practice is you want to have the smallest number of campaigns required. Okay. Right? Um, it's time consuming and difficult. Is that why? That, 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 that's right. It makes your account structure messy and much more difficult to manage. Um, so are there full-time Google at Google Grants professions? I'm sorry. Are there, you... are there people who just do like Google ads for their company or nonprofits, and that's all they do, and they're paid 40 hours a week to do that? Uh, for not if it's if it's a large national large profit, nonprofit, most likely. For smaller mm -hmm. ones, no, you can't fill 40 okay. hours a week doing yeah. that. Profit. And then. Just a couple more. One person was asking, and I think you already answered it. Like, what's the the best number of headlines and the best number of descriptions? And I think I heard you say more is better. Yeah, you want to do as many as possible. So it's 15 headlines, four descriptions per mm -hmm. uh, per RSA. Um, you okay. really want one RSA per ad group, and so it's, okay. it's 15 or four. Do you have any experience with Bing ad grant? Uh, it's deprecated, no longer in existence. Oh. Oh, it's done? Yeah, it's done. They shut it down. When? Uh, I don't know, but in putting this together, I was going to do both Bing and Google, and it shut wow, down. Wow, that's news. Okay, that's weird, too. All right. Yeah. Um, Let me see. Let me find... Okay, let's go back to keywords. So, this is the last question. There's tons of questions, Um, and I appreciate you giving the tour because nonprofits never get to see this. It's always a slideshow, and here's yeah. what you need to do, but it never... <laughs> never actually shows you how to do it. Um, so the keyword themes, I don't actually see those in regular ads. Is that a smart ad thing? It is, it, it, okay. it's the thing, that's correct. So um, how many keyword things max, maximum would you suggest for ads? Uh, as much as are differentiated. So there, okay. there's two, right? And so, we did three, right? We did event taking registration and nonprofit event management. I could do a lot more for this. Um, think about it similar to, you know, like ad copy or ads, right? If the intent in your ad is going to be different, it's a different keyword theme. Okay. Thanks. So just make sure they don't overlap each other. Yeah, it's okay if they overlap. It, it, oh, it's okay. Marketing. It's fine. Google will figure it out. It's okay. All right. All right. So I think that's it. Um, appreciate your knowledge. That's really very useful. And that's it. There were tons of questions. There's, I don't know. I guess you just have to go to Google and search Google ads training, right? And see what you can find there. It's really hard to get good training on Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, and Google ads, like practical hands-on training. So thank you so much, Ron. You're very welcome. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful afternoon. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.